Hi, I'm Michael Clark for the Road Trip, reporting to you from San Diego with my two new friends, and that is the Nissan NV200 cargo van version, as well as the 2014 Nissan Versa Note. This is the five-door hatch that is going to be seen around the world and also in Canada, starting at an MSRP of $13,348. Now, if you're thinking cargo, $21,998 is what you'd be looking at to get into something like this. NV200, which makes a lot of sense for people who are needing to use commercial vans in a situation where they may not be able to fit certain vans into things like parkades. So we're going to tell you everything you need to know about these new vehicles from San Diego for the road trip. Send us an email at steelbeltedmind at gmail.com. Buckle up, it's time for the road trip. Well, now it's time to do the walk around here in California, and I can show you some of the things that are very different about the new Versa for 2014 as opposed to the 2012 model. Now, you may not be aware that there was no 2013 Versa hatch. They wanted to basically make a clean sheet design, and they've definitely done it here. Now, the first thing you're going to notice when looking at the vehicle is the steep rake of the windshield. This is all designed for contributing to better aerodynamics. At the front of the vehicle, there's actually quite a bit of damming and when I say damming I'm talking about the good type of damming for helping directing air around and underneath the vehicle. You know, even things like the fuel tank have been massaged when it comes to how the air runs around it. Now, this is the SL Tech package. It's about as loaded as you can get. Well, actually, it is as loaded as you can get a Versa hatchback. But the thing you need to know is that all of that equipment, like, for example, the around view monitor. Now, what you're going to see on vehicles that have that equipment is cameras at all four corners. Now, we first like that on Infinities, but this gives you the actual bird's eye view as though you you've got your own satellite over top of the vehicle as we move along here you're going to notice that even though we're dealing with a wheelbase that is very similar to the outgoing model we're also dealing with shorter overhangs making the vehicle that much more easy to park uh, the versa note is important to canada nissan canada for many reasons it's one of our best selling vehicles for, uh, every year over year over year uh, it's, a, it's a segment for Canada in general. It's, it's quite important. It's over 100,000 units in Canada, and we've had traditionally quite a very good success with it, upwards of 17 plus percent market share. And our new Versa Note, the 2014 Versa Note, we expect to really take us back to our, our heights and, and beyond. Now, under the hood of the Versa Note hatch is a familiar friend in the way of what we already know as the engine in the Versa Note. Well, it's not a note, it has a good note. It's a Versa. Wait a minute. Okay, we got these new naming things that they're doing for Versa. So let, let's explain exactly what's going on here. We got global names. So you got Versa Note Hatch. Okay, I got it now. Now we have Versa Sedan, which is still the least expensive car available in Canada if you're going off of the MSRPs and not all the crazy whacked out incentives that the other manufacturers are doing to try to price themselves at or lower than the Nissan Versa Sedan, which doesn't have a note in it. Okay, well, the note you're hearing right now is the 1.6 liter. Now, this has 109 horsepower, 107 foot-pounds of torque. Now, you can get it with a five-speed manual or the CVT. That's the Xtronic style of CVT, which has been revised, made a little bit smaller, made a little bit more transmission-y. And the one thing that I did need to point out is because it's a global car, it's going to be up against tough crash 
testing, and that means things like Euro end cap. So that's why you've got this much crushable space and the engine placed low. Now we did notice that they're saving a couple of bucks here when it comes to the interior colors. Do you really care if your front radiator cross member cradle is the same color as your car? Well, if it means that you can get the car for as little as 13 and change, who cares? The uh, Versa Note starts with the S grade, the base model. The base model is well equipped with things like power heated exterior side mirrors. Uh, you walk, and that starts at 13,348, so one of the very affordable price. Uh, as you walk up to the mid level trim SV, you're getting things like power windows and locks, uh, Bluetooth, hands free telephone, cruise control, uh, you know, remote keyless entry, the, the real value packaged uh, offering. And you move on up to the top, which is the SL trim which max, maxes out at about $19,000. You get uh, features like that around view monitor I mentioned before, heated front seats, uh, an upgraded, nice trimmed out interior, 16 inch alloy wheels. So very nice package, uh, but also very value uh, conscious as well. Now the one thing you're going to notice when you look at the side of the Versa Note hatch is the spotter panes and we're a big fan of these because sometimes your A pillar can get so large here in a vehicle that's wanting to do well in tests like the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety Roof Crush that you've got to make these things pretty darn massive and unless you're going to be infusing a lot of high strength steel they're going to stay pretty thick but by having this spotter which is placed down low it kind of reminds us of the Kia Forte sedan in that they had that downward dip and we do have defroster vent there too Interesting to note, and thank you to Nissan for realizing that even though the car starts at $13,348, standard heated side view mirrors are you listening competition. These need to occur on any Canadian vehicle as well as any U.S. vehicle in the Rust Belt. Now, the one thing I needed to point out about mirror designs is that they are mounted on the doors. They are not mounted on the door in an area where it would block your vision. So it makes a lot of sense. Now the one that we're driving has the smart key style of entry. So all you have to do is touch the tab to get into the vehicle. Now as we take a look at the back here, the one thing I did want to point out to you is extremely wide, the wide opening of the rear doors. This is one of the best leg rooms that we've seen in a long time, about 970 something millimeters, like I'm going to get out of tape measure and tell you. But I will tell you that it is expansive. I mean, this is downright cabin, third world country expansive. So the other thing that needs to be pointed out is that we're not dealing with a four wheel disc brake system. To keep costs low, you've got to make some sacrifices. And considering the dynamic capability of the car, probably not going to be doing a lot of auto crossing with it and need to worry about four wheel disc. What you do need to think about though is aerodynamics. Now you'll notice that over the previous generation car there's been a little bit more sculpting to the roof. Now this makes a lot of sense for getting the air to flow properly around the vehicle. But what also happens depending on design is that you get turbulence in weird places. For example, taillight assemblies. Who would have thought that a taillight assembly could be contributing to not helping to move the air around the vehicle? Well, what they've done here is put these vents into the tail lamp and this vent system helps direct the air in such a way that you don't, you, you don't have the turbulence that you would normally get at the rear of the vehicle. Now this is of course our first stop and the one thing that I did want to point out when it comes to the VersaNote hatch is the size of the rear window. Now even with the Everlast boxing gloves that we're now faced to deal with when it comes to rear headrests, even in place, this is actually one of the best expanses to see out of when it comes to the class. So way to go to Nissan for that. Now you'll notice that because this is the SL top level tech package, all of the options for, you know, under 20 thou, it's actually quite well put together. Now you've got of course your tab here to get into the back. We've already unlocked it, but I wanted to give you an idea as to how much cargo area exists here and it's definitely best in class. The one thing I do like here is that we do have a proper pull down so you're not going to get gribbly in the winter months. But the other thing that's really neat is what they've done with hiding additional cargo area away from pry bar eyes. Now this floor piece comes out like so and I'm gonna do it with one hand because I am that good at least I think I'm that good hey you there you there helping out with the Nissan event 
Could you come on over and give me a hand with this on camera? That would be much appreciated. You know, that's how press events actually come together extremely well, is you've got people that are making sure that all the logistics go absolutely perfectly. And we've got one of them with us right now from page one. Hi there, what's your name? Hey, what's going on? I'm Kaylin. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Michael Clark from The Road Trip. I was trying to one-hand it here to impress our viewers in respect to this stowage compartment system, but if you could give me a hand with that, I would much appreciate it. Sure. How can I help you, man? Well, let's show them exactly how it's done. So let's try to get this, this out. Okay. In fact, you've been playing them with them all week. How about you do it for me while I tell the people at home what's actually going on? All right. There you go, man. Now, the way that this works is, is that you've got this particular piece that can go into the cargo area. So what you have now is you have a raised floor area, and if you dump the seats down, you're going to get, of course, that flat load floor. But let's say I don't want to put anything under there. What, what, what can I possibly do? I think you might be able to put it down there a little bit, right? That is absolutely correct. And that's one of the neat things about this floor is it allows you to actually put this down in such a way that it accommodates much taller items like large water bottles or crazy surfboard antiques or whatever else that it is that they have here in California. Well, thank you very much, sir, for helping out. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Now, as for the grade walks for the Nissan Versa Note, you've got three levels. There's the S, the SV, as well as the SL, which is the one we're going to be driving today, the Tech Edition. Every possible option for just a shade over 19000 in the MSRP. Now, I just wanted to point out this particular SV trim because this is the plastic wheel cover that you're going to be getting when you are looking at some of the lower Versa Note trims. One thing you'll notice is how aerodynamic that particular shape is, as well as these low rolling resistance tires. Now, when you get a CVT with this particular vehicle, you're going to be seeing these particular names for low rolling resistance. And low rolling resistance tires are not the hockey pucks that we first experienced when we first started hearing about them on hybrids. These are now vehicle tires that are giving that low rolling resistance for economy, as well as something resembling dynamics. Let's also point out something that this particular segment has been somewhat lacking in when it comes to the character lines, the, the beauty, if you will, of the metal stampings. And the one thing that actually caught my eye is this particular character line that flows down the vehicle. Now, it's not as flowy as, say, the Mazda 5 flanks, but at the same time, there's a very unique trajectory about this particular line. Think about trajectory when I say this because the way that it has been put together in the land of designers is it is supposed to follow the trajectory of a squash player as he follows through with his serve and you follow that particular line. So congratulations, your car is also healthier than you are. You know, if there's one thing that's impressed us on the drive so far is how well the power is delivered to your foot. And we're still dealing with an engine that's 109 horsepower, 107 foot-pounds of torque. Doesn't sound like a lot. I think it has to do with the CVT. The Xtronic CVT has received a whole pile of improvements. And not only that, it's actually quite a bit smaller. Like if we want to talk about weight reduction for Versa Note over the previous 2012 version of Versa Hatch, it's about 302 pounds, which is the weight of some auto journalists that should maybe get out of the game. But this particular vehicle has given us a whole new appreciation for CVT so far. Now, Let's face it, they do feel different and a little bit strange in compared to a conventional transmission, but don't kid yourself. This is the way of the future. We're certainly not going to see six-speed automatic transmissions anymore in vehicles like this. It really doesn't make a lot of sense economically, as well as for packaging. Let's face it, the smaller you can make these things, the better that you can work on things that really matter, like crash standards. Now, we don't have marks yet from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety or the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the ones that matter to North America. But remember, it's a global car. So so that means that it has to go up against tough tests like Euro NCAP. And that means that it's also going to have to not just take care of the people inside, but the people outside. So let's say, for example, this particular Nissan Versa ran into me. Well, as you can see, 
I would be contacting the hood in such a way that I would meet the crush zones. It's little things that you may not notice, and it has to do with the flush fitting wiper arms. There's really nothing in the way that's going to leave too much in the way of a character building scar. I'm not saying you should run into people with these cars, but, well, like I can show you here, it's got a good angle. Well, as you know, I'm a stickler for design, so the one thing that actually got my attention, in addition to the aero qualities of these particular tail lamps, is, is where they come from. I, I have to admit, there's a little bit of 370Z going on here. That's right, I said Z in the USA. And there's also the, the bit of a juke influence, I'd have to say, so it's definitely a very clean design, flows very well with the vehicle. You'll notice here, too, that with the bumper height, we've got a very low load-in height. So once we open up the hatch, which uh, thankfully, even though it has the keyless tab with the SL Tech, uh, still has a handle. You're actually doing something. You're actually actuating something when you're opening it. Now, I did want to point out that this particular cargo area has quite a large, almost squared off type of opening, so you don't have it intruding off to the sides. So that's going to make loading in larger items like that gifted console TV that your grandmother's getting rid of. I mean, you totally could put an RCA color track in the back of this. Now, what I did notice here is that with this low load in height, you've actually got a bit of an integrated rub strip. And the way that it's done with the bumper is in such a way that when you're loading heavy items in, you're not necessarily going to hit this first. I'm a big believer in going to the accessory bin and making sure that you get some form of stick-on lip cover. Some manufacturers even have a flip-out type of fabric-y cover to keep things from getting marked up. Now, we did talk a little bit already about this particular dual load uh, floor, divide and hide and, and conquer, really, when it comes to what this vehicle can do for cargo conundrums. Now, when you get these seats down flat, you know, let me talk about these seats. Here's something we actually are kind of appreciating. Now, even though the Versa Note is a five-seater, come on. I mean, we <laughs> don't know what a real five-seater is. It's called a Le Sabre. Uh, this particular five-seater does have the seat belt here, but it doesn't have a headrest. There's no headrest to be had. It's expected that if anybody is sitting back there, they're about half or five-eighths of a person. I mean, perfect for tweens. You could certainly fit somebody in and around the 65-pound mark in the middle position. But even with the headrests in place, which aren't exactly the Everlast boxing gloves of other makes, you're able to see out the back very cleanly. This is a very good rear window in respect to how well it dips down so you can actually see through. I really enjoy the vision so far on this particular Versa Note. There's also light in the cargo area. You can actually see what you're searching for. Now, beneath the floor, which does get pretty low, you would hope that you would find a spare tire, but what you actually have is your jacking tools. The spare tire is located underneath. That's right, much like a truck or a minivan or something else that loves to get your spare tire dirty. Now, for those of you who have seen some of my reviews over the last few years, you probably know that I'm a big hater of everything brown and crusty. Uh, we don't have too much of it down here in California. Well, you'd be surprised how many of the old convertibles I see running around here in San Diego are a little tatty on the rear quarter panels. But what bugs me is a vehicle that's not going to give the protection where it's really needed. Now, let's face it, we've been dealing with unitized construction for years. And when those rockers all peel away and cascade into the gutter, we know that we have reduced the integrity of the vehicle. Now, most jurisdictions are smart enough to say, hey, get that rusty piece of junk off the road. But, well, unfortunately, back home in Manitoba, we don't have that sort of, uh, how do I say this, big arm of the law when it comes to making sure that rusty vehicles get off the road. So when I take a look at a vehicle, one of the first places I get to, even with my decrepit knees, is the rocker panels. Now, I did notice, upon closer inspection, that there is something here resembling a rock guard, but it's really, really thin. And considering that you've got structure that's being welded together here, the one thing that I did notice is that there's some gaps in between that are going to be perfect spots for salt brine and grit to get in, to start carving away at this particular vehicle. I would even go as far as to say that it may be an idea at the dealer level, if they have, of course, a body shop or at a private concern, to get this treated. 
And when I say treat it, I mean get some goo on here. Get this completely covered up, especially in the seams along the bottom here. So do that and also make sure that you're using a proper type of rust proofing. It's better to get into something that's a little oily and a little bit greasy because it gets into those crevices that's going to protect this vehicle for the long haul. So who are the competitors for the Nissan Versa Note? Well, let's see. We got Toyota Yaris. Not a lot of love there. Ford Fiesta. A little bit more Euro love. Honda Fit. I still really like how you can articulate those second row seats. Yeah. Well, then of course there is the Chevrolet versions. You know, things like Spark and Sonic. So it, let's face it. This is a market now that's getting really crowded. And the neat thing about it is, is that the U.S. is starting to realize how important having a vehicle like this is to their lineup. Over the years past, it was really thought of as an afterthought, and they were trying to scratch their heads and figure out why Canadians had such an affinity to small cars. Maybe it's because we're a little bit smarter. Now remember, the Nissan Versa Note has to remain economical. This is a car that is not only going to be very impressive for entry-level buyers, as well as people who are thinking about downsizing, but it also has to be priced in such a way that it's not going to start dipping into the mid-20s, which can pretty much happen when you start looking at some of the other competitors in the class. So, to get a vehicle like this, price at just over 19000 with features that, well, don't exist on other vehicles at all, let alone having to go to the upper classes of infinity to get them. I mean, a round view monitor. What a great idea. And also not going the route of adaptive cruise controls or millowave radar. I mean, it's all fine and good to have, but, you know, let's keep that for the bigger money set. The thing that I would like to see on this particular vehicle is, well, not a heck of a lot. I mean, some may have their concerns about it not having the four-wheel disc brakes that the competitors have, but let's face it, we don't expect to see these cars at an autocross circuit, or do we? Because I have to tell you, in dealing with the dreaded California dip signs, this has one of the tightest structures that I've experienced in a long time. So much so that I'm really tempted to go and try the Versa sedan back to back to see if it has that type of rigidity. I can't honestly remember if it did, so I'm going to do a little bit of digging into that. I think the thing that concerns me the most about this particular car, coming in at $13,348 for the base, is that with the styling and the feature set, getting you into this car in and around the $16,000 mark is going to give you some really slick features, including rear view monitor. It's pretty darn attractive, and I got to admit, I'm a little concerned as to what this vehicle could mean to the future of the Versus sedan. I mean, it is Canada's least expensive vehicle, but wow, did they knock it out of the park with this. The Nissan NV200 compact van is answering a question that, well, quite honestly, was answered a few years back. You may have remembered something called the Chevy Astro. Well, that was a van that really had its cargo together. It really was one that was adored, and so much so that if somebody still has one that you can't put their foot through, uh, they're still using it. They're very much in play, which says a lot for the longevity. Of course, the interesting thing is that Chevrolet next year is going to have a version of this called the Chevrolet City Express. Is this the Chevy Astro of the future? Well, hard to say. But what we will say is that it is one of the most parkable vehicles that we've been in for a long time. In fact, the turning radius of about 37 feet, well, you can zip around very quickly in some of the tightest of spaces. Kind of makes me think that it would be the perfect van, especially with dual sliding doors, for a heist. The NV200 compact cargo has you know, segment leading fuel economy of eight liters per 100, and you know those those formulas you can't you can't beat. If you you feel the pain when you fill the truck up every time, and so that's really what the, key, the clutch is. Now the interior, the, the volume efficiency, the height. You know you can take it under underground parking garages and places like downtown Toronto or Montreal where you have tight confined spaces. There really isn't another product on the market that can go uh, go there.
Wow, one-handed. Didn't hurt anything. That's pretty cool for a sliding door. And remember, you've got two sliding doors, which is why it makes it perfect for a heist, because there's nothing that the security cameras pick up better than everybody coming out of one door. Okay, let's get off the heist thing. Now, the one thing that I wanted to point out here is that when it comes to actually getting cargo into the Nissan NV200, well, you've got a beautiful arrangement of a 70-30 split rear door, which actually will do 180 degree articulation. And they've made it in a way that the interior wheel houses have really shrunk. I mean, there's no way that you're ninjas could put their tactical boots on and sit on them anymore but at the same time you'll be able to load in pallets of gear say if you had to maybe swipe or sorry borrow one of those pieces of scientific equipment from the university from the outset when we designed the NV200 compact cargo it was designed to be upfit so we actually durability and, and tested the vehicle and the shakers and things you see on the, t on the TV and the videos with the racks and bins in it. So the whole vehicle is structurally designed to handle the loads. And to that end, we have uh, integrated into the structure of the vehicle, you know, like weld nuts, basically the fastening points throughout the interior of the vehicle and in the floor so that uh, you can attach very easily, work with some of our upfitters to uh, attach and fasten racks and bins, shelves, whatever the operator might need to carry their gear and equipment. Well, that's our take on the Nissan Versa Note as well as the NV200 cargo van. You know, I've got to tell you some interesting news about this particular cargo van because it's going to be available in passenger derivatives, most importantly as the New York City Taxi of Tomorrow. We've already heard hints that we may actually see the taxi version coming to other centers. Does that mean we might see a people version of this in yellow? possibly cruising the streets of Winnipeg? Hard to say, but we do know for a fact that the Versa Note hatchback is going to be available soon. And at a starting MSRP of $13,348 and topping out at just over 19, plus the added practicality of a hatchback, which we know Canadians love, we think it's gonna have plenty takers. Now, if you've got thoughts, feelings, or questions about any of these Nissans or anything else with wheels, send us an email at steelbeltedmind at gmail.com. For The Road Trip, I'm Michael Clark. It's time to reveal the best kept car secret of the year, a totally new Z car. The new Datsun 280ZX. Come sit in velour. Aircraft lighting on all instruments. Pre-flight checkout system. Power windows pre-programmed. Look, no hands. Power steering. Five-speed stick with cruise control. Four-speaker stereo. A cockpit of luxury found in cars costing thousands more. Now, feast your eyes on the new 280ZX. The look is pure Z car, yet it looks like no other Z roaming the road. It's Datsun driven to its best, and Datsun at its best is awesome. We are And now it's time to play Road Trip Trivia. This week's question has to do with this old school dealership you see here. Where exactly was Pickett Motors in Winnipeg? Well, if you get the answer right, you will receive a deluxe engine detail shampoo from the detailing experts at Blue Ocean Auto and Boat Detailing because a clean engine runs so much better. Blue Ocean Auto Detailing is also the detailer for the road trip for any vehicles appearing in Winnipeg. Now to answer the question, send us an email at steelbeltedmind at gmail.com. Contest closes July 14th, 2013. Enter often and happy motoring!